chapter Vedanta and Privilege, part 1. We have nearly finished the metaphysical portion of the Advaita. One point and perhaps the most difficult to understand remains. We have seen so far that according to the Advaita theory, all we see around us and the whole universe in fact is the evolution of that one absolute. This is called in Sanskrit Brahman. The absolute has become changed into the whole of nature. But here comes a difficulty. How is it possible for the absolute to change? What made the absolute to change? By its very definition, the absolute is unchangeable. Change of the unchangeable would be a contradiction. The same difficulty applies to those who believe in a personal God. For instance, how did this creation arise? It could not have arisen out of nothing. That would be a contradiction. Something coming out of nothing can never be. The effect is the cause in another form. Out of the seed, the big tree grows. The tree is the seed, plus air and water taken in. And if there were any method of testing the amount of the air and water taken to make the body of the tree, we should find that it is exactly the same as the effect the tree. Modern science has proved beyond doubt that it is so, that the cause is the effect in another form. The adjustments of the parts of the cause changes and becomes the effect. So we have to avoid this difficulty of having a universe without a cause and we are bound to admit that God has become the universe. But we have avoided one difficulty and landed in another. In every theory, the idea of God comes through the idea of unchangeability. We have traced historically how the one idea which we always have in mind in the search of God, even in the crudest form, is the idea of freedom. And the idea of freedom and of unchangeability is one and the same. It is the free alone which never changes and the unchangeable alone which is free for change is produced by something exterior to a thing or within itself which is more powerful than the surroundings. Everything which can be changed is necessarily bound by certain cause or causes which cannot be unchangeable. Supposing God has become this universe and God is here and has changed. And suppose the infinite has become this finite universe, so much of the infinite has gone and therefore God is infinite minus the universe. A changeable God would be no God. To avoid this doctrine of pantheism, there is a very bold theory of the Vedanta. It is that this universe as we know and think it does not exist, that the unchangeable has not changed, that the whole of this universe is mere appearance and not reality, that this idea of parts and little beings and differentiations is only apparent, not the nature of the thing itself. God has not changed at all and has not become the universe at all. We see God as the universe because we have to look through time, space and causation. It is time, space and causation that makes this differentiation apparently, but not really. This is a very bold theory indeed. Now this theory ought to be explained a little more clearly. It does not mean idealism in a sense in which it is generally understood. It does not say that this universe does not exist. It exists, but at the same time, it is not what we take it for. To illustrate this, the example given by the Advaita philosophy is well known. In the darkness of night, a trump of a tree is looked upon as a ghost by some superstitious person, as a policeman by a robber, as a friend by someone wanting for his companion. In all these cases, the stump of the tree did not change. And there are apparent things and these changes were in the minds of those who saw it. From the subjective side, we can understand it better through psychology. There is something outside of ourselves, the true nature of which is unknown and unknowable to us. Let us call it X. And there is something inside which is also unknown and unknowable to us. Let us call it Y. The, unknowable, the knowable is a combination of X plus Y. And everything that we know, therefore, must have two parts. 
the x outside and the y inside and the x plus y is the thing we know. So every form in the universe is partly our creation and partly something outside. Now what the Vedanta holds is that this x and this y are one and the same.